up everyone welcome back to another i lost my podcast interview uh, i'm your girl michi g author of the book i lost my mom now what memoir of a motherless daughter which is available on amazon uh, but today i'm super excited to introduce our special guest that we have uh, i had the honor of interviewing someone who is not only a mother a daughter, a friend, a soon-to-be wife, but she is my sister, and I'm so honored that she took the time to participate in my podcast and wanted to share her side of grief as it pertains to losing my mother, or our mother, and her grandmother, her beautiful grandmother, um, who passed when she was a teenager, so I'm super thankful to introduce to you guys my beautiful sister, Chantel. I hope you all enjoy this interview. And let's get into it. All right. Hi, Sean. Um, welcome to the I Lost My Podcast. I just want to start by saying thank you uh, for agreeing to be a part of my podcast and sharing your experience with the grief of our beautiful mother. So I'm going to start by saying uh, introduce yourself. And your loved one that you want to talk about today. So, if I were going to introduce myself, I would say that my name is Chantel. Mm -hmm. I am a native Nashvillian, mm -hmm. which is now something of a unicorn, <laughs> I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I am a mom of two beautiful adults, um, Sean and Jay, 24 and 27. And um, yeah, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. I'm not, and I'm a friend. Yeah, and then who's your loved one you're talking about today? So, as we talk today about grief and loss and loved ones, I probably am thinking chronologically in years. And so, the first person that's nearest and dearest to me um, that I lost um, when I was 15 was my grandmother, mm -hmm. who helped raise me, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so, between my grandmother and my mom and Deborah probably is a volume of things to share. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you describe your grandmother and your mother uh, as a person? Like, who were they as people and what did they mean to you? So, my grandmother um, really, my grandmother, Beatrice Thomas my grandmother Eunice Fireson and my mama Deborah collectively were the three people have been the three people in my life who have grounded me consistently mm -hmm. and so of course my mama niece is still living and she's going to be 89 on the 12th um, but together I think my grandmother Beatrice Thomas who really had me since I was a baby um, really helped to show me some strength, some structure, and to um, deal with difficult things. Mm -hmm. So through her, I learned how to overcome a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to go directly to my mom and Deborah, I would say um, I don't really remember having a relationship with my dad before my mom and Deborah. When I met her, um, my dad and her had married. I think I was three, maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. And I just remember um, from early on, how, are you shaking your head to me? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I start over? Uh -uh, okay. okay. Um, I just remember early on, um, I remember the way she smelt, I remember the way she wore her hair, that her skin, I just I always thought she had the most beautiful skin. And um, I just I just really wanted to be like her. And I liked spending time with her. And one time, there, there were a lot of simple things that um, girls take for granted, um, for instance. And so I remember one time, um, I was over on a weekend, and um, this was before the age that we started going to nail shops and things like that. And I remember her talking to me about my nails and telling me that if you soaked your nails in lemon juice mm -hmm. and salt, 
lemon juice and salt, that it would help them stay strong and help them stay white. That was a really, really long time ago, so I might have the advice wrong. But, I mean, nobody had ever talked to me about my nails before. Um, that was just, you know, so it was things like that that um, really stayed with me. And then um, she would always be the person that would take me school shopping. Um, and she would be the person that I would come to talk to about heartaches and heartbreaks. Mm -hmm. And... You know, she was just, she was everything. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a lot I'm not saying because I don't know how much I want to say because mm -hmm. I don't know how emotional I want to get or I don't want to get. Mm -hmm. um, but when I tell you that um, at 18, um, 18 I became pregnant with my first child, my son, and I was really um, afraid of disappointing people who had expected me to go do this and to go do that. And you know how it is when, you know, there's a whole buildup of who people expect you to be and then something happens and for people, um, they show you not necessarily love at first or acceptance, they show you disappointment. I remember that year she bought me a necklace. That was a year I got the necklace with an S on it. And she just always supported me. She never said anything about being disappointed. Um, you know, nobody is, nobody goes out. Well, I don't want to speak for everybody or generalize, but mm -hmm. I didn't set out to become a um, pregnant, unwed person at 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. um, but when life takes you down a path and you make a decision, um, you, you go with your decision. And so, she supported me and there came a time when I moved and I moved into my very first apartment and I really didn't, I didn't have anything. I had a baby bed and I had a couch and I didn't have a bed and my son slept in a baby bed and I would sleep on the floor by the baby bed. And so my mama Deborah, she came one day and she came, she came with Dee, she came with Jeff, I don't know if you remember this. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> and she had a microwave, she had a vacuum, she had towels, she had all these things, foundational things that you needed to get started in life that I, I hadn't even thought about. Um, oh, what's up? Do you want to be a super listener? Do you want to support the ILM podcast? Well, it's easy, it's simple. All you have to do is go on Cash App, type in I Lost My Podcast, all lowercase. Go to Venmo, type in I Lost My Podcast, all lowercase. Or even PayPal, and type in the same, I Lost My Podcast, all lowercase. And make any type of donation that you see fit. Here on this podcast, we're looking to do some great things. Improving equipment, that's part of it. So, simply put, be a super listener. Invest in us, grow with us, and watch where we take this podcast. So, donate. A penny, a dollar, it doesn't matter. Anything is welcome. We thank you for listening. Now, back to the show. I know you know it's interesting, right? She had all these things that I hadn't even thought about. Um, so... If that's any um, idea to how close we were or what she meant to me, um, I could stop there, but I could go on and say that the, when I got married for the first time, um, she was there. Um, and for other reasons that we're not going to discuss here, she was the only parent there that day that was representing me, um, along with um, Daddy James and my Mama Nisi, Grandma Nisi. And I just remember <laughs> all the time. You know the train. <laughs> I, I just remember um, being upstairs in a room getting dressed and you know she was there, Yvonne was there. And I just remember crying, starting to cry. And she just looked at me and she was like, this is your wedding day. What are you crying for? And I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But um, anyway, she got me together. We got on down the got on down, and we got we got married. Okay, life happens. Um, when I got married the second time, um, she was there again, and she didn't. She did not say, I told you so, or she did not say, don't do this or don't do that. Mm -hmm. With everything, um, she prayed for me and she encouraged me to pray. And um, yeah, so those are, those are some things I'll share on my own. Now, if you have yeah. questions, <laughs> you're welcome to ask me Talk questions. Off camera. <laughs> yeah. um, so you kind of gave some good memories, um, okay. but if you can think of any other Good memory, something that comes to mind for your grandmother and for mom, just the greatest memory you'll always take with you. So, for my grandmother, Beatrice, um, she could make a meal out of nothing. Um, but the thing I remember about her is that when I would be up in the mornings getting ready to go to school, um, my girlfriends would come over, she watched them in the morning for, her, for their mom's youth. There was always a first breakfast and a second breakfast. Mm -hmm. The first breakfast was always, you know, kind of like maybe some sausage and cereal for us and some juice. And then when we were getting ready to go to the bus stop, then she started second breakfast because this would be the breakfast for my grandfather. Um, and it would always be bacon and sausage and eggs or potatoes and homemade biscuits. And we just always, we never wanted to go to school. We wanted second breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I remember leaving and having um, all my aunts gravitate to the porch. And they would sit out there and drink coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that. I remember that she is the reason why I drink coffee. Um, because she would drink her coffee in a saucer and the coffee would spill over, mm. and she would let me drink the coffee out of the saucer. <laughs> 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 and so, um, you know, lots of fond memories, but those are ones of her. Um, if I could just say, um, my mom and dad were there, just so many memories. I remember um, times when I would be depressed or going through something, and I would always try to stay away during those times because I knew she could read it on my face, she could read it in my voice. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say, well, I'll just, I'll check in with her in a, in a week or so when things are better, whatever that was. And my phone would always ring and she would always say, you know what she would always say? Mm -hmm. Why well, hadn't heard from you? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? Is everything all right? And you just couldn't hide it from her. She, mm -hmm. she just, she had a way of knowing so that memory, um, as well as, there's just so many. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of parental lessons from setting your child up and getting them started with a good foundation um, to uh, remembering when Jay was a baby and, <laughs> and I had um, my first little car and she got me AAA for Mother's Day after my car had stopped one night. Mm -hmm. I was living out this way, coming down Dickerson Road, and my car had stopped. Mm -hmm. After that, she got me AAA for Mother's Day, and she renewed it every year mm -hmm. until, you know, I was old enough to take it over myself. But um, who thinks like that? Who yeah. thinks that far in the future about what their kids need and what they want um, to do to help them be successful? So I appreciate that. I appreciate the type of wife she was. Um, you know, I appreciate her faith and her advice that always rings sound in my head every time I want to go left on somebody. She said, she would say to me, you make sure you're always doing what you're supposed to do. You make sure that you're always doing the right thing, no matter what. But you make sure, but that you make sure you're doing the right thing. And so, in the back of my mind, um, when things are happening, I, I hear her voice all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, we're going to switch, I guess, gears a little bit. Okay. Um, so, we're going to go back to the day where you all spoke to these ladies. Okay. Do you remember or can you describe the day that you lost your grandmother and your mother? Um, 
And what did that day look like for you? What was what were your thoughts throughout the day? The day that I lost my grandmother, she had been in the Harry Hospital and mm-hmm. um, at that time where I was staying we didn't have a house phone. And I was going to catch the bus to Meharry to see her because I was 15, 14 at that time. And um, before I could get started with the day, Daddy James came over. Daddy James never came over. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that if somebody had sent him to get me, then that was probably pretty major. so he came by, he said that they had sent him to pick me up. And when we got over to um, my grandmother's house, I just, I just could feel that that had happened. And so it felt like the ground um, beneath me really had just fallen away. Mm-hmm. Um, everything changed after that, my grades, my outlook, my, you know, and if I, Fast forward to losing our mom and Deborah, I would say that the day started actually the night before, um, and we were gonna have a big celebration. She had been not feeling well, and this day, she was she was herself almost. Um, she was upbeat. She was laughing, and I just remember. You and I having a conversation. Well, maybe we don't need to stay over tonight. Maybe we can go home and you know let her get some rest. She seems like she's okay today. And it just now somewhere in me, I have to admit now I thought, okay, okay, you know what you think with okay, mm-hmm. um, but I felt like maybe that's the devil trying to steal his joy mm-hmm. for this moment, and I'm not going to give my brain to that. Mm-hmm. You know, if I feel like she's, you know, enjoying herself, then I need to let her enjoy it and not stay here and loom and watch, you know. Um, and so we left. Mm-hmm. Um, but the day was wonderful. Her and Josh were cutting up, and, you know, she's cutting up with all of us. And I left, and I remember getting a call early that next morning or later in the night from Dad. and. I just, I was hearing him, but I wasn't hearing him, mm-hmm. you know. And so by the time I could get myself together, you guys had already gotten to the hospital. And I just thought, okay, no, not not, not right now, not yet, you know. We were waiting on Junior to be born, you know, and, but I knew she was tired. Mm-hmm. I knew she was tired, and when I looked at her, I could feel she was tired. And it just, I didn't have any right to say, don't go. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't, it, w- it was very selfish. I felt, looking at her, I felt like I had been very selfish in wanting her to stay here when obviously God was saying, no, you're coming home so I can reward you, mm-hmm. so I can heal you. Um, you don't have to stay down there to be healed, so. Yeah. Um, how has losing her affected you, if any? Well, it has affected me in that um, I could always talk to her about the difficult stuff of relationship. Mm-hmm. Because when I became grown, we had grown woman talk. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just the you know, teenage mother to question. We had talks about, you know, sex and, you know, and arguments and decisions and um, why you might do this as opposed to that and why you would stay in a situation um, as opposed to leave. And I felt like her advice was honest and sound and it was based on faith Mm -hmm. and I don't really have that. I didn't have that. You know, Nisi, our mama Nisi is always going to be the standard as far as faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that she's the rock of faith. And we have grown woman conversations now as well, mm-hmm. but 
Deborah really was the first person who we could have real heart to heart about things that were going on with me personally that I wouldn't necessarily share with other people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What's up, ILM uh, podcast supporters? It's your girl Michi G stopping by real quick. Um, do you see me holding this mic? Yes. So, you know, we've started this podcast, but we're making progress and we're going to grow as time goes on. But if you would like to contribute by sending a donation, investment, whatever you feel the need to give, um, always feel free if you like what you hear to, uh, to cash app us, to Venmo us, to PayPal us. Everything is all lowercase level at I lost my podcast. Um, so PayPal, I, I lost my podcast. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Um, what is that thing? Cash app at I lost my podcast and Venmo again. I lost my podcast, all lowercase letters. Um, feel free to donate anything, whether it's $50 to a dollar to 50 cents to five cents. I don't care. We are most appreciative and grateful for whatever you send. Um, or just the fact that you listen. So thank you guys for listening. We hope you contribute. And we, more importantly, we hope that you continue to listen to us. So yeah, just giving thanks. We love you all so much. Okay, uh, so switching gears a little bit more. Um, so in my book, we talk about the five stages of grief. Mm-hmm. Those stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Mm-hmm. Uh, which of these, if any or all, have you experienced? And do you mind giving examples or elaborating on those stages? I pro- I have experienced all of those stages across my life. Mm-hmm. And um, I would call myself a trauma survivor. And you experience grief. You know, when you have encountered a trauma, when you overcome one. And so I have had those iterations so much that I really just kind of roll through them now. They happen for me, but they go fast. You know, um, now of course, you know, you're going to come back to some things. The bargaining when it came to Deborah, I think the times when we were at Cancer Center of America, I, that was my bargaining. You know, God, if you do this, you know, show us this, give us this sign, you know, I felt like. Um, and I, that stage probably ended after our last appointment at Meharry. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I realized at that point, you know, um, there was a gospel song, get right church and let's go home. <laughs> it's the chorus. Mm-hmm. I felt like after that, we need to get right church because we need to make sure that we are going to be able to be in a position to see each other again. So that's kind of where that is. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your grieving journey. I know we still have, but mm-hmm. let's talk about more of your uh, grieving journey. So walk us through it. Um, do you feel like you've always handled grief well, or do you not feel like you've handled grief well? I feel like I have, it has been a moving target. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, when you, I experienced trauma early in my life, and so I did not know what it was. Every day, it has just always been putting one foot in front of the other. One second, one minute to get to one hour to get through the day. And that is, that's kind of my approach. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to um, grieving, uh, I would say, y'all know like Peyton Manning, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> so I, I saw this interview where he was talking about how he sees things on the field when he would play. And so when I, I know I'm coming into a situation that might go left or has been like a death or a loss or something traumatic that I am getting ready to have to go through, for me, it is like, for some people, it's things go loud. For me, things go silent. And it's like I'm moving in slow motion. And the goal is just 
to get through the minute, to get through the hour, to get through the day. And now yeah, that's not the healthiest way necessarily to deal with grief, but that is how I have been able to do it. Now there have been times in my life where I have sought counseling. Um, there have been times in my life when I have been on medication. Um, there are times in my life when I have self-medicated with alcohol or with relationships, you know. So the gamut. But at the end of the day, um, it is faith that grounds me. And I know it's faith that carries me. Because there's really no way um, you can go quiet when everything else is loud mm -hmm. and make it through chaos. And so that's how I am agreed. Um, do you feel as though you're allowed to grieve um, as a woman in your everyday life in society? Do you feel like you're allowed to be vulnerable to the world? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of that is what I pick up and carry myself because I believe in that misconception of the strong black woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look into that, you know that there's a whole history of black women enduring pain because people didn't think black women felt pain because we were black and we weren't human. And so we take that up and we pass that on to our children. And so it's been really hard to break that cycle. Um, so being allowed to grieve, no. I still don't allow myself to grieve but I know that I'm supposed to. Yeah. But even in my knowing, I don't allow myself to grieve, yeah. so. Is it that you don't know how to allow yourself or you just don't feel like you're allowed to? I don't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get through the minute, the second to the minute to the hour, mm -hmm. and that is how it plays in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about this week. I'm not thinking about Thursday, Friday. I'm thinking about what I, where I have to be in the morning. You know, and I just, you know, I ask God for grace and, and help to get through everything else. Yeah. That's very honest. That's very honest. Um, how are you adjusting with life or to life without your, both your grandmother and your mother? With my, without my grandmother, I think that probably, um, I don't know that I was ever successfully able to self-correct after that. I was going to magnet school, I was doing great, you know, and when I lost her, school, things that made sense no longer made sense. Um, and our family hadn't been the same, you know. Uh, she, our family just hadn't been the same. And then uh, with the loss of Mama Deborah, it has been difficult because I still expect to see her at every event. event. Um, I am not interested in seeing anybody else in her place, in her house, in her cars, um, at my grandmother's dinner table. And realistically, that is not, um, time does not stand still mm -hmm. when we lose people. Mm -hmm. You know, she had a husband, our dad, who has to figure out how to carry on. Mm -hmm. That's on him. That's not on me. That's not on you. Mm -hmm. He has to figure out how to carry on. And though my heart hurts when I watch some things happen or I watch people in different spaces, um, I have to get that to God and know that that is, that is not my issue. Mm -hmm. that, that's not my issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about holidays and birthdays? Adjusting with your grandmother and without your mother? Holidays and birthdays... You know, if Mama Deborah, you got your day. You got a day. You didn't, you know, we might and I got together a lot of times, but you know we were going to get together on your birthday, and you knew you were going to have a cake on your birthday. You knew you were going to have a cake from Sweet and Sassy, from Publix, um, on your birthday. You know, Sam. or Sam. Yeah. Sam, Sweet and Sassy, or Publix. If people are interested, Sam, <laughs> Sweet and Sassy, and Publix is where... She got our cakes from. I think Sweet you. and Sassy's going Yeah, Sweet and Sassy. Oh, stop! Yeah. yeah. It's a room shop, man. Yeah, it's a room shop. Like that. That's where you're going to get your cakes from. So, um, <laughs> you knew you were going to get that. And whether it was a, 
you know, a, she always had something for you. Not that we are people of materialistic, but that was your moment for her to show, to share on behalf of her dad, you know, their love for you for the, you know, your t their token of the love for you. Christmas is a whole other, now I'm gonna tell you, this, the, the grieving has been most difficult around Christmas. Um, Deborah would always do the door to the house. You knew there was always gonna be Christmas tree. You knew that on Christmas Eve, we were all gonna be together and we were gonna exchange gifts. And, you know, it has not been the same. Um, again, it was when we were teenagers, we looked forward to getting that little monetary gift so we could, you know, pay that little extra bill or whatever. And it's like she was reading your mind and she knew that too. And so she would always slide you a little something extra. So I miss that, not the money, not the gift, but the way that she thought about what you needed, you know, and would take that into consideration. And um, when I got married, she would gift us, but she would always slide a little gift for me. <laughs> On the side, because as a parent, I would just imagine you, you always want your child to know they're special to you, aside from everything else. And, yeah, so I, I definitely miss her for, from that. And there would be times across my life where I have gotten into um, situations and I did need financial help and I would, you know, not call dad, I would call her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she would say, it was never that they couldn't do anything. She would tell me what they could do. Mm -hmm. And even if that, Thing that they could do was prayer that meant more to me than getting a million dollars um, because it was the care that she took and you know loving you so um are you familiar with survivor's guilt i am familiar with survivor's guilt um, do you, well, I guess I should say, um, for those watching or listening, survivor's guilt is when a person feels guilty because they survived a life-threatening event that others did not. Um, do you feel like you've experienced that with the loss of your grandmother and your mother? Not in the sense of what that definition is. Mm -hmm. The guilt, I feel, is about not doing more. Um. There are times when I probably should have gone by, but I didn't want to feel sad, or I didn't want her to see me cry. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty because I didn't make myself go. Mm -hmm. With my grandmother, you know, my I was relocated from her house to um, when I was 14, and the mm -hmm. guilt is, because I didn't make a bigger push to stay. Mm -hmm. Because I could have assisted her more every day mm -hmm. had I been there. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of guilt. Um, yeah. That you experienced. Um, aside from uh, survivor's guilt, I know, and not saying that you have experienced it, but another common thing to experience with losing someone is suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced those thoughts um, with the loss of your grandmother or mother? Probably a little bit with the loss of my grandmother mm -hmm. um, because life was really still unfolding and I just really had a hard time seeing what it was going to look like without her guidance, mm -hmm. you know, and I have to say time spent with Nisi really helped me. Time spent with Mom and Deborah really helped me after that. Mm -hmm. And I would say with the passing of Deborah, I didn't experience um, suicidal thoughts. Um, but more of a return to some depression that I had dealt with earlier. Um, and I, that has probably been the more lingering thing, you know. So with those, I guess, thoughts of depression, um, what are your thoughts with therapy? I stay in therapy. In terms of grief. I keep me in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so no, know. but uh, I, I just, I learned a long time ago that, you have to have sound counsel. Mm -hmm. you, you 
just really do. Um, in my genetics on both sides, I am predispositioned to addictions. And once I learned that, it became more important for me to understand that you have to have sound counseling. And so that's why I stay, I stay in contact with sound counseling. Um, for those that may be thinking like, oh, therapy is, no, it's for crazy people, or they have this preconceived notion of what therapy might be, that it might not be. Um, how would you recommend therapy for someone that might be on the fence about it? I would say you definitely, if you're going to pick a therapist, you want to, I can't give you any advice about that, just being honest. For myself, I've had therapists who have been within a church and outside the church. I've had therapists who've been within the church that really hurt me and took me away from the church because of the experience that I had with them as therapists. Then I've had some therapists that weren't affiliated but were spiritual people, uh, people of faith, who were wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, the last therapist I had um, was a really great guy who just didn't ever necessarily ever share. I never knew what his faith walk was or not, but he was probably the most impactful um, in helping me um, determine and realize that I had PTSD. I was darn near 40 years old. And so you need to do your due diligence and find out what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Do your research. Don't necessarily go by word of mouth. Um, if you do go by word of mouth, do your research on that person. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay, so we're winding down to the last couple of questions. Um, if you could give any advice to any other women going through grief, uh, what would you say to them if they don't know how to maybe allow themselves to grieve or just that it might be their first time losing someone ever in life? Um, I would say be gentle with yourself. Um, a lot of times we are more gentle with others than we are with our own selves. I would say if you're a person of faith, find yourself a scripture to stand on. This is mine. Stand on this scripture right here. Mm -hmm. um, and just take it one second at a time because sometimes thinking about tomorrow or the end of the day is too much. So the last two questions are going to be a little roller coaster. Okay. This first roller coaster question is going to be more fun. Okay. Um, so I guess off the top of your head or one that just sticks out, what song comes to mind when you think of your grandmother and your mom, Deborah? Um, what well, song that comes to mind when I think of my grandmother, um, she was a hummer. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my, my mom and my aunts would be going out from a young kid, I would always be crying because I wanted to go. Or if, my, if I was supposed to be picked up for a weekend and it didn't happen, I would be crying. And eventually she would pick me up and put me on her shoulder and she would just hum. She would pat me and hum. So that's what comes to mind when I think about that, not necessarily a song. Uh, when I think about Mom and Deborah, I think about all of our family cookouts um, on Healy where the music would be blasting and Dad would be at the grill and, you know, Mom and Deborah would be in the kitchen and it would be Teddy's Jam. Teddy's Jam, who, who is that? Uh, it's Teddy Riley, but it was Guy. Guy. That one CD from Guy with Teddy's Jam. Teddy's Jam for me. You know what? Okay. You had to put it on here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that song would come on and it had a really strong lingering intro. And so the song would come on and you know, you might be kind of just, you know, but by the time the song got mid height, you were so hyped. She would be so hyped. She'd be done, left the stove and be, you know, <laughs> dancing around in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I just, I remember that. And then the last one. Um, now, to direct it to the camera, we're going to pretend that heaven has a direct 
television to uh, this podcast, the I Lost My Podcast, what would you say or want your grandmother and your mother to know? <laughs> Anything you want to say to them? Um, I would say to my grandmother, I would say that I am so thankful that because of you, I never had to come home to an empty house, you know, and because of you, I know how to make biscuits and I'm all right. (laughs) Uh, I want you to know that I turned out all right, that the things that you poured into me are still there and I thank you and I love you for it. Um, Now, Mama Deborah, you know, I think you want me to look at this camera. I'm going to look at the camera. <laughs> I think what I would say to, to Deborah is that I, I could not have asked for a better bonus mom. Um, I think that so much of who I am is because of you and because of who you were to me, because of who you were to my dad and to our family. Um, there wasn't a step in... You know, people say, well, you know, she was her stepdaughter, that was her stepmother. She really took the step out of it. And we never even discussed it. You know, it was just her way. She always included me. She never made me feel like a weekend child. And um, that taught me a lot about how to parent my children um, and give them a strong foundation so that whatever situation life takes them to, that they can, they can be strong in knowing that, you know, they're gonna be all right. And so, I know you had to go. I, I know you had to go. Um, I wish you didn't have to go, but I understand today that you had to go. Um, and that is the reward that we all look forward to at the end of the day, is getting the opportunity to go where you are. So, I thank you and I love you. Well, Sean, we thank you for participating in that. I lost my podcast. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. And stay tuned to the next episode. Bye, and guys. The biscuit recipe. I'm going to have to see it. Put it to this. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to see if you like that with the biscuits. <laughs>